Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benuni. you're watching Israeli News Live, and this broadcast this evening on live stream is going to air tonight on YouTube as well. And I really had wished I would have gotten more of my information together, something that just come to my heart here kind of at the last minute. I knew that Donald Trump in this election is some kind of a signpost to the world. And I put on here, the Trump is sounding, but no, it's not the great trumpet is sounding, nothing of that sort whatsoever. But nonetheless, I do believe that Donald Trump, especially in his, uh, what would you call it, excitement there in the political arena and the things that he says, uh, challenging the establishment, challenging the Pope of Rome, uh, many things that he does clearly is something that could very well be a sign indirectly, we might add. So I titled this, The Trump is Sounding. I almost changed the title for a moment on, uh, on, the, uh, on our live stream broadcast. That's Israeli News Live, by the way, live stream. If you want to follow there and join in, you can. This is airing live right now uh, to the listeners there. They're also, by the way, they're getting, they'll be getting news footage and feeds that you will not get to hear here on YouTube because there's going to be some things that I just want to get out to the publicly, public as quickly as we possibly can. And then later we work on things that we really study and build on on YouTube to give a more in-depth look at our broadcast uh, from the things that we are studying there. So let's get right into this and then maybe you'll see why I actually make this, uh, this statement here that I believe that Donald Trump is in an indirect way a signpost because of his name itself. But his name is referring to a Trump or a trumpet as a letting us know what is about to happen in the world's political stage today. If we go to 2 Samuel chapter 15, beginning with verse 10, but Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. Now that is the most provocative biblical context you could look at that would suggest that Trump, Donald Trump may very well be pointing to the advent of the false messiah coming on the scene. Now, I'm not saying that Donald Trump is the false messiah or the antichrist. I'm just simply saying that his name in itself, as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. Now, I really believe that eventually, the ultimate desire for the Antichrist is to reign in Israel. But Donald Trump, his own name, as he is sounding in this election, may be telling us that we are at that door. Remember, Absalom, this is David's own son, his name in Hebrew, Absalom, my father is peace, rises up against his own father, overthrows his own father, David, who is a type of the Mashiach, the the. Uh, son of David, Ben uh, David, would be the true Messiah. But now notice the son of David we look at is being Yeshua today. But Absalom is also a son of David, is he not? But it wasn't it wasn't, God was not looking at Absalom to take David's place. He was not looking at Absalom to be the Mashiach. He wasn't looking at this at all. He was actually prophesying of the coming of the true Messiah, Yeshua himself, that would come on the scene. Jesus, as many people know of him today around the world. All right, so what is it? There, Absalom had given order, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron, a false Messiah. And it looks like, perhaps, that Donald Trump is leading up to a time period when they are going to bring on the, the, the false Messiah, the Antichrist, to reign in Israel. Notice what John Kerry said the other day about to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the graduates there uh, at the university there, and, and um, I forget exactly where that was there, but anyway, up in the northeast uh, part of the country, the United States, he made the comment there at the commencement speech there for them to prepare for a borderless society. Okay, so they're getting ready. They're, they're making the world ready for this. Now, look at the rest of the scriptures. And when Absalom went to, 
went 200 men out of Jerusalem that were called. They went in their simplicity and they knew not anything. See, it's all done secretly. And Absalom sent for uh, Ahithophel, the Gileonite, David's counselor from his city, even from Gilo, while, the, while he offered sacrifices. That's another important thing. And I wish to, I'd underlined it. And as I was building this up, I'm looking at the time. I even backed this live broadcast up a little bit. But I was wanting to put in the Temple Institute and what they're doing now. Offering sacrifices. Another signpost of the false Messiah coming. The Antichrist himself coming. Because why? We, while he offered sacrifices and the conspiracy was strong. For the people increased continually with Absalom. And there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom, making speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us and smite the city with the edge of the sword. You see, David was a true type of Yeshua. And I've shared this with you guys many times. He crosses uh, the Kidron Valley. He weeps over Jerusalem and says, How often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood, but you would not, just like Yeshua did. Now, he doesn't use the word the hen with her own brood, but he wept over Jerusalem just like Yeshua did. He crosses the River Jordan, going to hide out. Yeshua crosses the River Jordan, spiritually speaking, and he says to his men, he will not return. At one point, after he's gone for a long while, he sends back word. He has two witnesses there. He says, get the people in one heart and one mind, and then I'll return. Same thing Yeshua is going to do. Get the people in one heart and one mind. Let me tell you something. You can't get the people in one heart and one mind with the Jews and the Christians. You can't get it with Old and New Testament. You can't fulfill Bible prophecy of the two witnesses with all the nonsense that people are coming up with. And God, uh, God, as my judge knows, friends, I love you guys. Many of you write me, you're my friends, and I love you dearly. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just simply telling you, you can't have the two witnesses die in the streets of Jerusalem. You can't have their resurrected bodies coming up. You can't have judgment without two witnesses, friends. You know, the Bible had, a in Levitical law, God had given the, the commandment that a, uh, an adulteress could not be stoned without two witnesses. And God is going to stone this earth. He's got to have two witnesses to come and do it, friends. And those two witnesses have got to be rejected. Notice they brought two false witnesses against Yeshua. Notice in the time of Moses to, 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 to the Pharaoh of Egypt, he had two witnesses, Moses and Aaron, that go before the Pharaoh. Pharaoh had his two witnesses, two false witnesses, James and, uh, James and Jambers. And according to the book of Jesha, that was Balaam's own sons. Wow, man, this is interesting, I'll tell you. Uh, Anyway, and the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. Didn't Peter say the same to Yeshua? Oh, we're ready to fight. He tells him, put away your sword. It's not what I want. It's not what I come for. He said, could I not call ten, uh, ten legions of angels right now and my father would fight for me? It's supposed to happen this way. That's why J David, when they wanted to cut ben, uh, uh, Shemai's head off, David said, let him alone. The Lord told him to do this. It's all types and shadows, right? All right, now watch what right here. 2 Samuel 15, 16. And the king went forth and all his household after him. And the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. Remember the ten virgins? Of Re uh, not Revelation, but of the New Testament there. Five are wise, five are foolish, but they're all virgins. They're all representations of Christianity. But five were wise. They had oil in their lamps. The five foolish had no oil in their lamps. But nonetheless, they are virgins. The concubines here that are left behind, ten of them. And David tells them, he leaves them there to do what? To keep the house. You see, the Christian... Believers are there to care for his people. And I know even after I did this video this past week here about who are the Jews, in light of the fact that my black brothers and sisters, not, not all of them by no means, but there's a major movement saying that the real Jews are the black people in America that are the descendants of the slavery. My brother, sister, I beg you, that's not scriptural. I understand, you say, because of the curse. That's just like the, that's like where the, many of the 
uh, white supremacists out there say that you were cursed with, with your skin color because of what happened to one of Noah's sons. This is nonsense. Come on, wake up, you guys. You're, more, you're further along than that. If you are part of the house of Judah, then you need to be back in Israel. Because the house of Judah, according to Zechariah 12, is going to be in their homeland. They're there in the homeland. Why? Waiting to take responsibility for their sins. This is what Daniel says in Daniel 9 when he talks about their iniquity will have an end. See? They, they got to reconcile their iniquity. There's no reconciliation yet. Yes, Yeshua died. Yes, Yeshua paid the price. But the reconciliation has not happened yet. And believe me, as fast as prophecy is unfolding, we don't have time to go ship a whole new group of people to Israel and take the ones out that you claim are not the Israelites. God said he would return them there, and he said he would go there. And by the way, they're supposed to be as blind as a bat to who Jesus is right now. So this is why they don't accept Christianity. Because in one day, she'll be born a nation. Not 1946 or 48 or whatever the case may be that people think that Israel's born of a nation, born a nation by the United Nations. It's actually 1948, May 6, I believe it is, or something like that. It's not then. See, she becomes a nation when God opens her eyes. This is when she'll become a nation when she recognizes where she went wrong. This is why she's got to come right back to where she left God, and she left to God when she rejected Samuel the prophet. See, God used a prophet to reign over them. Israel has always sought for, for what? Dreams and visions. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that profess to have dreams, visions, and everything else, and, 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 and I believe that many of them may be true. I don't say that they are or they are not. But let me tell you something. When that dream or vision fails, God said, don't hear them. It's no different with some of these other things that people are doing as well. And that's interesting in, in, in itself, see? Oh, I, I won't go in there. Uh, God help me. I'm not going to go in there. Anyway, they left ten. Left 10. Now, let's look at what happens here. This happened, uh, what was it, yesterday. The title of the article, Holy Twitter, Trump Takes on a Top Baptist Theologian. Kathy Lynn Grossman wrote the article on Religion News Service May 9th of 2016. Now, this is what happens. Moore, as she states in here, punched first. Outspokenly, Never Trump from the get-go. He ramped it up this weekend with an op-ed in the New York Times, an appearance on the face of the nation. Moore called Trump's campaign reality television and moral sewage and faced, uh, faced the nation. Now, I don't watch reality TV. I don't watch TV at all. We actually have a TV in our home, but the nice thing is it's not in English, so for me it's kind of out to begin with, but I never have. I just don't care for television. I, I scan news and that's about it. So I don't know what Donald Trump does on his television program and for me it doesn't really make any difference. See, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't really care about which politician says what. But the point is, as they say, he throws the first punch. Now, what happens next? Same article, Trump says, Russell Moore is truly a terrible representative of evangelicals and all of the good they stand for, a nasty guy with no heart. Now, I think his comment is very interesting because a lot of people are throwing Donald Trump under the bus once again, saying he is attacking the evangelical community. He's not. He's going after one guy that threw him under the bus, and he's making a comment back. Now, here's what Moore says. Sad. And then he tweet, tweets back to, to Donald Trump. 1 Kings 18, 17 through 19, which states, now he doesn't put that on there. I put that on there. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto the Mount Carmel, and the prophets for of Baal, 450, and the prophets of, of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. Now, no doubt, Mr. Moore, uh, the, the head of the Baptist convention there, is referring to Donald Trump 
as following Balaam and forsaking the commandments of God. But in all respect, regardless of the, either one of these men, I'm going to tell you just like it is, the shoe's on the wrong foot. The true guy that is following Balaam that troubles Israel is not Donald Trump. It happens to be Mr. Moore, along with a whole other line and list of people there that support the Vatican's agenda. This here is on Pope Francis wants to know what Rick Warren, Russell Moore, N.T. Wright think about marriage. The trio were invited to offer Protestant perspectives at the Vatican Conference. This was on Virtue Online, November the 3rd, 2014. And believe me, Mr. Moore made sure he attended there. But this is what he does say. He's trying to cover his tracks because he knows a lot of Baptists know better that the Catholic Church is the, the harlot, or, or excuse me, the mother of harlots spoken of of Revelation. At least some of the old-time Baptists that really still know their Bible. It says, I am willing to go anywhere when asked to bear witness to what we as evangelical Protestants believe about marriage and the gospel, especially in times in which marriage is called culturally imperiled, wrote more on why he's going to the Vatican despite his disagreement with the Pope. Well, you may disagree with the Pope on certain things. Pope doesn't mind that. Pope's bringing all his little children back home to their mother. That's the harlots, that is. Now, let's take another look at this. Disgraceful Donald Trump blasts Pope Francis for taking a shot at his faith. Of course, we all know this. I've just talked about this recently, how this happened on February 18th of 2016. Now, let's just look at it. Just, I need to highlight this for you so you can kind of understand where I'm going with this. A person who thinks about building walls wherever they may be and not building bridges is not a Christian, the Pope said, after a six-day visit to Mexico. This was according to the New York Times. Trump fires back. This was all done uh, in the media there. Pope would wish a President Trump, if and when the Islamic State were to attack the Vatican for a religious leader... Uh, he will, excuse me, I'm sorry, the Pope would wish for a President Trump if and when the Islamic State were to attack the Vatican. Now he goes on to stay because he is there to erad eradicate the problem there in the Middle East. So I'd have to say that Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin are more in sync on this type of ideology. And by the way, I do believe, as I, if I sit down and looked at Donald Trump recently, he reminds me of John F. Kennedy. And I didn't put this in there, but I wish I would have. John F. Kennedy was not paid for by the elite. He had his own money from the millions and billions that his father had also made. Uh, and, and I think they say that they were into bootlegging or something like that. Who, who knows? But anyway, John F. Kennedy was not easily bought. Even though he was a Catholic boy, he, couldn't, he, he wouldn't do what the Pope wanted to do either. And that's what caused him, cost him his own life. And I am afraid because Donald Trump is not part of the political establishment and has financed his own campaign thus far. And of course, everybody throws that in his face, you know, because now he's going to have to get a little bit of help to run the rest of the race here. Uh, that, you know, I mean, and quite honestly, why should he have to spend his own money? You know, but he has spent a lot of his own money and financed his own campaign. So he, because he is the way he is, he's definitely not the guy they want for president. And it's been very outspokenly said as well as the Pope has made that clear, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, has made that clear. Everybody has said that he's not going to be the President. It just makes me wonder, what are they really up to? Anyway, Trump fires back the Pope. Okay, we already read that. For, for a religious leader to question a person's faith is disgraceful, Trump said in a lengthy statement. I, I think that uh, it, it kind of got under his skin, and it seems like he doesn't care what anybody has to think when it comes to that. So I kind of I kind of appreciate that about him, but I don't like the way he is about women, period. I'll just tell you straight up, because to me, women are equal in the sight of Almighty God. There's not, there's not lesser creatures or anything like that, as some people would believe. And, uh, and I think the same thing with the Muslim people as well. I don't agree with their religion whatsoever, but they're still human beings, and people should care about human beings. In fact, if anything, it's the best time in the world to ever witness to the Muslim people is now, where the opportunity presents itself in a safe manner. Uh, continuing on, Pope Francis on Mount Zion above David's tomb, and this is the point that I wanted to bring. He is crowned here in this picture here, sitting there in Israel. So when the question, or when, when Mr. Moore sends this thing to Donald Trump, uh, saying that he, who, he troubles Israel, uh, and, 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 you know, he's, but he's not referring to Donald Trump as Elijah, I can promise you that. He's referring to, to, to Donald Trump as the man that actually is siding with Balaam 
and bringing out the false prophets. But it's the other way around because here is your true Balaam right here in plain sight with his fish crown on, part of that ancient Babylonian tradition, I might add. Uh, so here he is, and we've already seen that Mr. Moore has gone to, uh, to the Vatican to speak as well. So they're siding together. They are together. The, the Catholic, the, all the denominations have been coming back. And by the way, I did a video a little while back as well where I showed the images, including the Southern Baptist Convention, all of them had came there to give and bow allegiance to the Pope of Rome when he was inaugurated. This would have been a great time for that as well. Now, it gets deeper, though. Watch this here. Former minister. This is the article I mentioned yesterday that I said I wanted to bring out to you, and I meant to get back to it, and I didn't, but here it is. Former minister. Israel must separate from East Jerusalem or lose the city. Now, this, this, this guy right here that you see in your screen, Chaim Ramon, is the one that made this statement publicly. It's on the Times of Israel, May 9, 2016, yesterday. Former minister and Knesset member Chaim Ramon warned Saturday of a, uh, of a Palestinian demographic threat in Jerusalem. And this has been something going on for, for, for a couple of years now. Uh, Haaretz uh, has reported on this as well, that they have been secretly building their strength by becoming uh, uh, citizens of Israel. And now their, their, their numbers have grown to over 300,000 thousand residents have resident visas with voting status and everything in East Jerusalem. All right, saying Israel must separate from the city's eastern part if it hopes to maintain control of its capital. Speaking at a cultural event in the city's French Hill neighborhood, Ramon, who was a member of the Labor and uh, Kandimba parties over a period of more than 30 years in the Knesset, said Jerusalem could soon find itself with a Palestinian mayor if, it, if Israel does not relinquish the city's eastern neighborhoods. Okay, now, his comments are extremely dangerous. And notice, though, he was part of the Labor Party. See, like uh, Levini, see, Levini Tsipi, Tsipi Levini. Notice they all side with the Vatican agenda. They want to make sure that they hand over, they want to split uh, the country, they want to give a Palestinian state, they want to make sure that the Palestinians have uh, East Jerusalem as their capital, all this stuff. This is, it makes it look good, though, when it comes out in the Times of Israel that he's saying that they should give, over, give up the, the east part of Jerusalem because they don't want to have a, an internal uh, takeover of Jerusalem. And then the next thing you know, all the Jews are thrown out. So it sounds good. But even in the case of Chaim Ramon, you have to do a little research, but find out who is he with. Well, Notice what it says here on the Irish Times on March 24th, back in the year 2000. And there's many articles you can find about him, but just to show you this, Barack pays tribute to Pope as agent of historic change. That was the former uh, prime, prime minister, Ehud Barak. He said, last night, a senior government minister, Mr. Chaim Ramon, reiterated that, that view. Pope John Paul was the first pope to visit a synagogue in Rome. He was the first to define anti-Semitism as a sin, and he was the first to visit Yad Vashem and to honor the memory of six million Jewish people who died in the Holocaust, he said. Now, all these things, I appreciate that myself. I appreciate Pope John Paul as a man to go and to do these things. Pope Francis did the same thing. He visited the the, uh, the synagogue in Rome recently as well. But this, my Jewish brothers, sisters, this is all a plot for a takeover. They're going to take over Israel. And all these people that you have seen, Mr. Chaim, he is also part with the Vatican. Mr. Moore, no different. He is also part with the Vatican, hooked up with uh, Rick Warren and N.T. Uh, Wright there as well. This is nothing but a big, gigantic... Vatican play to take the Jewish people away. So is there a Trump sounding when we hear Trump's name? A trumpet in that case? I believe that there is indirectly, but notice what that trumpet was. It was the time where the trumpet that sounded that Absalom said you would call out that Absalom reigneth. So I think that Donald Trump even if he's not elected president, even if something they do evil to this man, whatever the case may be, and I pray that no evil comes to the man. I believe at least, you know, he's got some things that, that it's a heck of a lot better than most of the ones that are out there. But the point is, he may be a signpost to this world, letting you know that the Antichrist is about to reign in Israel. What's interesting is he said, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. Now, remember, 
They got a lot of property. The Catholic Church has the Catholic Church owns 60% of the land in Israel. 60%. And they got a huge piece of land out there outside of Mount Zion. And I do think that some of these modern day ministers that are citing for a temple to be built outside the Temple Mount may be a plot that the Vatican has, has, has started to get the third temple built outside on their own property. It'd be very interesting to see what's going to be happening in the very coming days. At any rate, I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for those of you watching on live stream. Join us. Look us up. Live stream Israeli News Live. You can find our broadcast very easily that way. We look forward to seeing you there. Look forward to be sharing some very interesting things with you. Uh, we will be in Israel in June. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily announce exactly when, but we will be there in June. Uh, be covering some other things, uh, some very serious issues that are going on throughout Europe, as well as a huge migrant crisis about to take place coming across the river from Libya. And of course, the United States once again bombing over in Libya as well, causing more destabilization in the region to help fluctuate, help get those migrants in there. As I said, and I am working on an in-depth study on this, the United States has been very successful in Syria. They're going to be very successful in Libya as well uh, because they have their wonderful ISIS troops on both sides. They're doing the fighting, doing the bidding for the United States government. And I guess that they, they want to carry out John Kerry's vision of a borderless society. So, what better way than to make sure ISIS goes everywhere? I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.